Though it's still the middle of winter, it's not too early to start thinking about gypsy moths, the caterpillars that cover your car and driveway and do some serious damage to the trees in your lawn, as well as the trees in the forests of the Blue Hills. I'm Judy Lair Jacobs, the Executive Director of the Friends of the Blue Hills, and I'm with Debbie Miriam from the Wakefield Estate, and she's gonna talk about gypsy moths as well as an event this Saturday at the Wakefield Estate at 10 a.m. Um, and we'll give you a little bit more details uh, later. This is not Blue Hills Alive, which happens every Thursday at noon. This is just an added bonus that we thought you would be interested in learning about um, gypsy moths. So let's get started. Can you start out by telling a little bit about yourself and your background in this issue uh, about gypsy moss, how you know about it, and then you can talk about the Wakefield Estate in general. Okay, so uh, I'm the landscape director here at the Wakefield Estate, and I've been interested in not only all kinds of native plants and animals, but also invasive plants and animals, because invasive plants impact our native plants very heavily. And so gypsy moths are one of the worst invasive uh, moth species that we have in New England and over the past three years we've had an infestation of the gypsy moth. So we're particularly interested in trying to eradicate the gypsy moth or figure out how um, they can be eradicated naturally and because they impact the health of many species of trees that we have here at the Wakefield Estate. And so you were pointing to this initially. Do you <laughs> yes. want to just say what this yeah. is? So Take this pointed. is what we're looking for at this time of the year. Obviously the gypsy moths have laid their egg masses, the females, on the sides of trees and they are, this is only one egg mass and that's because we've had the kids remove all the egg masses here at the Wakefield Estate. Um, but they particularly like oak trees and they have, uh, for the last two years, they've actually defoliated many oak trees in the Blue Hills area and they are going to continue to do that this year. So the idea is that we hope to remove as many egg masses as possible because each egg mass is 500 to 1,000 eggs or caterpillars in each egg mass. Great, and so if you have dealt with uh, gypsy moths on your property and either hired someone or figured out how to eradicate them yourself, let us know in the comments, we'd love to know. And why don't we step back a moment and just you can say what the history of the Wakefield Estate. We're surrounded by the Blue Hills and um, why don't you give a little yes. bit of the history. Yes, so the Wakefield Estate, is, we are a nonprofit foundation and we focus on education and community engagement and we have an amazing plant collection. This property has been in the same family for 300 years and over the years we have Polly Wakefield, the last surviving member of the family, created an incredible garden here with all kinds of native and non-native species of trees. So we do all kinds of educational programming with uh, people of all ages to uh, get people out and onto the land. And we don't usually think about gypsy moth in, in the middle of winter. Why, are we, why is your program specifically right now? Because uh, for one thing, it's very easy to see the egg casings on the sides of the trees when they have no leaves on them. And it's important to remove the egg masses before they begin to hatch, which will happen in late May, depending on what kind of spring we have. So it's a good time to get out, people outside in the middle of winter and you can see the masses so clearly and actually do something about them. Great, and if you have any questions about gypsy moths, this is your time to ask them. Um, so how, when and how were they introduced to the United States? So it's actually a very interesting story because the ground zero was in Medford, Massachusetts. A Frenchman by the name of Leopold, Leopold Trovelet uh, thought that he might be able to breed gypsy moth with silkworm and start a silk industry. He was an uh, amateur entomologist and he had this idea. So he put them on the trees in the, his backyard in Medford and 20 years later, there was a huge uh, gypsy moth explosion in Massachusetts. So it's, it's been here for a long time and it's become an issue all over New England. And so that's how it was, it, it's an introduced pest from Europe and Asia. So did they make silk? No, it, it was unsuccessful. And he went back to France as soon as there was an explosion. So he, he left when, um, right at the time when the gypsy moth uh, took hold. Uh. 
bad. Uh, yeah. So are there any natural predators here? Well, that's there are several natural predators. Um, one is an, an, a fungus and one is uh, a virus. The problem is, is that when we have very dry springs and dry summers, which we have had um, over the past three or four years now, with the exception of last spring, the the fungus can't establish itself and the virus can't establish itself and naturally kill off the gypsy moth. Now we did have some of the virus last fall, however, it only killed the gypsy moth off in parts of Massachusetts it didn't, and it was not um, impactful around here. And I noticed this this fall um, because I had seen that the moths were killed in other parts of Massachusetts but not around here. So we always, every year, we get a ton of questions about gypsy moths and whether this is a particularly worse year than the next. So please let us know in the comments any questions that you have. So my question is, and some questions that we've ha had in the past are, so those, um, the bacteria um, and fungus, mm -hmm. is that, um, was that introduced or is that Yes, so the, the fungus was introduced from Japan and the virus I believe that the virus is naturally occurring. Uh, so they occur in the soil and they're uh, host specific, so they only go after the gypsy moth. Um, but as I said, they only are effective if we've had a lot of rain. Um. And as far as other natural predators, actually uh, white-footed mouse is a, a predator that keeps populations low of the gypsy moth, but only when there's not a population explosion of gypsy moth. Also, certain chickadees and downy woodpeckers will eat the uh, caterpillars and also the um, egg masses. Oh, great. So do you want to talk a little bit about the event? Uh, Friends of Blue Hills is co-sponsoring an event with Wakefield Estate this Saturday at 10 a.m. We hope to see you there. Do you want to give us a little sense of what the event is? Yeah, going to be? so it's going to be hosted. We're going to have it here at 1465 Brush Hill Road in Milton. And we're going to host our event in our carriage barn. I'm going to give a slide presentation about the history of uh, gypsy moth and how its cycle can be impacted by certain native and non-native uh, viruses and uh, pests. And then we're actually going to go out to a section of the Blue Hills, which we have not scouted yet, uh, within a mile of the Wakefield Estate, and do uh, egg removals. So I think it's a great opportunity to bring your whole family out to learn about gypsy moth and then uh, we're actually going to do removals because if you think about it if there if you have just this one egg sac that's 500 to a thousand caterpillars if we all remove a hundred egg sacs that's that's a lot of caterpillars so you can actually have some impact if you go out there and scrape them off oh, is there anything else you we, we should know about gypsy moths and uh, so if you have uh, around your home and you see gypsy moth casings, the best thing to do is to scrape them off into a coffee can. Don't use your hands because the outside of the casing uh, has something that could be slightly irritant to your skin. And then you should pour boiling water on them or burn them. Uh, because if you just brush them off onto the ground, they will continue to survive. Also, you should check your firewood and the wheel wells of your cars because gypsy moth moves throughout the country through firewood and the moving of firewood and driving cars. Are they found throughout the United States? Well, no. So right now the uh, infestation is uh, west to Michigan and south to Virginia, but every year it moves m further and further west, south and north. Wow. So, great. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So if you have any questions about gypsy moths, please let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you this Saturday at 10 at the Wakefield Estate. We'll leave um, some of the information in the comments below. And we hope to see you this Thursday for Blue Hills Alive when Molly Ross from the Blue Hills Scary Ski Area will talk about that unique uh, resource in the Blue Hills and some of the history. So thank you and we'll see you soon.